Okay, we're going to um, try to do this movie once again. Um, I want to start at the beginning right here on the desktop. I have a uh, orange ball. Uh, it's a movie clip symbol that I made. Um, if I wanted to make another one, all I would do is uh, just get the circle tool, draw a circle, select it, and then do modify, convert to symbol, movie clip, symbol 2, and now I have a new symbol. I'm going to delete it on the stage and then I'm going to select it in my um, library and trash can it there. Okay, and then um, that's on this layer right here, layer 3. Okay, how do you make a new layer? You click this little button right here. Okay, so I've got the ball on layer 3. This layer is the ground, which is just um, two lines. Um, a line that drawn from here to here, black, and then drawn from here to here in black. And then I put some extra frames. I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to highlight these frames and remove them. Right click, remove frames. And then I'll go out here, select this frame here, hit F5, or right click on the frame, insert frame, and that insert frames all the way out to 40. Okay, and then the last interesting piece of this, so that was the ball and the ground, and the only thing that's left here, as you can see, is this red line, which is my guide layer. And so I drew this line, and then I added these pieces. How did I add the pieces? I'll show you. Just get a line, draw a line, and then what I did was so I used my black arrow tool. I approach the line. When I get close enough, you'll see a small curve, and then I can bend the line. Grab the end of my line and drag it down to here, attach it, and grab the end of this line, drag it down to here and attach it, and then I can just move this to curve the line. Curve it up and down, whatnot. Okay, and so that's how I created this line right here, using straight lines and then bending them to make the curves. And then the other thing I did was, is I double clicked on the little icon here. You can double click on these little page icons, and that's what I did right here, and I changed it to a guide layer. Okay, and it, when you have a guide layer, what happens is, let me turn these eyeballs back on. Um, what happens is, is when you make your movie, the guide layer doesn't show up. Okay, so when we see our final movie, the red guide line will not show up. Okay, this is going to be a bouncing ball animation. So what I'm going to do is, I've got the ball right here. I'm just going to go to the next frame and add a keyframe, F6. And then I'll use the arrow keys on my keyboard to move it down. Now, you can see my, my ball has uh, movement. Um, I'll arrow it up a little bit higher. And to really get this going the right way, I'm going to use onion skinning, which is this little button right here. Turn that on. And now I can see exactly where my previous ball is. Okay. So I'm just going to move it like that. All right. And then I'll go to the next frame and right click on it, insert keyframe. And then I'll arrow the ball down again. And each time I'm going to try to arrow the ball, move the ball, instead of dragging it, because I don't want to drag it sideways by accident. Control Z to undo. Uh, I'm going to try to make the distance between the balls greater each time. So on the next frame, this time I'm just going to hit F6 on the keyboard. And then arrow it forward, making it slightly more than the time before. Now what's that going to do? That is going to um, that is going to increase the speed of the ball as it falls. So each time I'm going to make it move slightly more. And notice onion skinning allows me to see the previous frames. I can stretch this back so that I can see more frames if I want to. And so the next one, F6 and a little bit more. And the next one, F6. A little bit more. And the next one, F6. And 
let's say, a lot. Okay, and so now if I was to play my animation, play it through to the end, hit play again, you'll see that the ball is moving. Now, if I wanted a smoother animation, I would need to make smaller steps in my animation, smaller movements. So what I would do is, is go back and make all of these sm smaller adjustments. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Just use the arrows on my keyboard to position things. And that way I'll end up with a smoother final product. Notice each time the ball needs to move slightly more than the time before. That way I will have what's called um, I'll have what's called slowing in, where it starts off slow and picks up speed as it travels. So the next frame, F6, and move it forward. And then finally on this next one, F6, and move it all the way to the ground. Okay, so now if I hit Enter, we'll see it gets to the ground. Now, um, so we've learned one element of animation, one principle of animation, and that's in bodies in motion. As they fall, they pick up speed. And that's known in, um, in animation as slowing in. OK. Um, all right, now that we've hit the ground, I'll add another keyframe, F6. Except this time, I'm going to zoom in on the animation. And I'm going to stretch the ball. And I'm going to squash it. And this is the first principle of animation, the most important principle of animation, known as squash and stretch. And there we go. And then I'll move the ball in place. Now, what tool have I used to do that? The transform tool right there. OK, so now if I use the comma and the period key, the ball falls, hits the ground, and then squashes. And on the next frame, it's going to do, there's going to be a, uh, pressure going in the opposite direction, which will cause it to stretch. So in this case, on the next frame, I'll bring it over here. And then I'll approach here with the transform tool and rotate the ball. Maybe slightly less of a squash and stretch. And I'll move it into position. And there's an explosion. The ball has now compressed and then taken off in the opposite direction. OK. And so now, if I turn off onion skinning, you'll see that we have a uh, contact with the ground, a squash, and then a stretch coming off. OK. For my next frame, I'm going to zoom out here, holding down the Control key and pressing the minus key. Then I'll hold down the space bar and reposition my movie. OK. On the next frame, what I'm going to do is F6. I'm going to delete the ball. I'll return to my regular selection tool, select the ball, and then delete it. OK. And then what I want to do is I want the ball to be back to normal size. It was stretched, I mean, and squashed and stretched, and then now I want it normal size. So what I'll do is just drag a fresh one out from the library. Turn onion skinning back on. And use the arrow keys to position it. Okay. All right. I'll drag my onion skinning anchor bar here so I can see previous frames. So now I have a very clear picture of my animation as the ball travels. And now as the ball bounces up, there's going to be a slowing down as the ball leaves the earth and gravity takes place. The ball will slow down. and It'll be at the slowest point right here on the pinnacle of this arch. So what I'm going to do is I'll put in my next keyframe, F6, and this time use the arrows. And now the motion between balls will get slighter and slighter as the ball gets higher and higher up on its arch. So I'll put my keyframe there, F6. 
signal, and this is called slowing out, when the ball begins to slow. Each time, the ball will get closer and closer to the previous ball, causing it to be a, having a slowing of motion. And the next one, I'm even going to overlap them to really just slow it down. Beautiful. F6. Six. Okay, and then as the ball travels downward, there'll be a greater distance between them. Okay, so slowing in, slowing out, so it's, it, the ball speeds up on the way down. As it bounces and goes up here, it slows down. And then on the way down, it's going to pick up speed again. So now the balls need to be farther apart. Okay. It's very handy to know how to do this and be able to do this by hand. Um, this is uh, by hand. What I mean by hand is obviously we're not doing this by hand, we're doing it using the computer, but we're doing it frame by frame, the way a traditional animation. speed. And I can always go back to a previous frame and adjust my distances. until it lands on the ground here. Now notice the distance between these two is kind of short, which will actually be a slowing down of the ball. Let's see how it plays. Okay, not so bad, but if I really wanted to make this smooth, what I would do is space these out in a different manner. So now, as the ball travels, each step, it gets greater and greater apart. The next keyframe, you got it. It's a squash and stretch frame. Get your zoom tool and squash and stretch. And then use the arrows to move it down. And now you have your, your squash. And then we rotate it and we continue the animation.